Saying that we have the spirit, and also as we have heard, an uh, impending uh, another storm, another storm. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't been keeping up with it just yet. I'm not sure if we are in direct line of it, but nonetheless, we want to pray for those who um, are affected in one way or another, whether it's just mildly or severely. We want to continue to pray for them and pray for us for that matter. Um, amen. We want to continue to um, just pray for the Carolinas and Florida and the coast and um, I don't know about y'all, y'all been hearing about some of the storms that's been taking place. There was an earthquake earthquake in Haiti, and um, I think they said like 150 people died in that earthquake, and um, they suffered ruin, and, um, you know, the earth is just, it's that time of year, so I'll continue to pray for um, those and other reasons. Also, we want to continue to pray for um, our family and in-house um, it's good to see brother and sister Bud with us after traveling Amen. to Florida Amen. Um, to try to ch um, check on their family member. It's good to have them back. So continue to keep them in your prayers and also keep um, Sister Groven in your prayers. Um, she just told me that her brother, who we were praying for, did make his transition. He mm -hmm. um, passed on yesterday. So mm -hmm. um, pray for her and her family mm -hmm. as they... Um, Go through this time as well and we want to continue to pray for uh, the North Broadway Church of Christ also the Thompson family um, as I shared with you all that was my mentor also the founder of the um, preaching school that I went to back in Michigan um, so I pray for him and also everyone that um, feel the impact of his loss mm -hmm. uh, so we got a lot to pray for. Amen. 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 On tonight, we um, started our introduction to the ninth chapter of the book of Acts. Um, before we jump back into the text, I want to share a few passages we didn't get an opportunity to go over to, but we started talking about um, um, this thought on Sunday. Before I go into it, y'all know I got to jog y'all memory. Y'all got I got to jog y'all memory for those who were here. Um, do y'all remember some of the points that we covered on Sunday morning? <coughs> Talked about Paul or Saul before he became Paul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Zeal without knowledge. Yeah, yeah, and that's mainly where I want to revisit mm -hmm. that zeal without knowledge. But but go ahead. That's awesome. Oh, that's what you said. Okay, okay. All right. Um, anyone else want to add to that? Pretty much, that's where it started, the zeal without knowledge, and then we went to several passages just um, corroborating that thought, um, that point. So anybody remember where we spent the majority of our time at outside of X9? What book? Corinthians. What chapter? Yeah, First Corinthians chapter what? Uh, six. Yeah, chapter number six. And uh, we dealt with, I want to say mainly around verse number nine through verse number 12. And matter of fact, let's just turn over there quickly and we'll just read it. We're not going to stay there, but I just want to refresh our uh, memory as we read those verses. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. And we won't read it all. I just want to read verse number 9 through verse number 11, where the Bible says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? And then he said, Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor rivalers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And then in verse number 11, this is where we spent a lot of our time where it says, and such were mm -hmm. some of you. Mm -hmm. Such were some of you. So we went down memory lane, amen. <laughs> uh, and we um, just thought on, you know, when we were in darkness, when we were blind, and um, we, we just share, you know, don't forget. Um, you got to be empathetic and sympathetic for 
some that find themselves still in darkness and the same sins that God has brought us out of, we, we still have to have sympathy and empathy um, for them. And um, the example that I gave is Paul, once he was converted, he still had empathy and sympathy on those who were in similar situation as he was. And where, where did we find that at um, when he was talking about those who were in a similar situation as him? Romans, the 10th chapter. Amen. Y'all remember Romans, 10th chapter? He said, my prayer is for Israel that they might be saved. He said, I bear them witness that they have zeal, but it's not according to knowledge. He said, without knowledge, they go on to establish their own righteousness. So, so he, he is saying, you know, I've been there, done that. You know, having zeal, zealous for God, but it's not according to knowledge. And, and I, I want to spend a little more time on knowledge because I think that this is important. I, I, I think that this will help us to understand where a lot of people are, um, who we know personally or just in the world in general. Um, so we'll start off, matter of fact, I want to start off somewhere where we recently studied Hebrews, the sixth chapter. Hebrews chapter number six. And um, just for the sake of time, when I get over there, I'm going to just read and um, try to keep it moving. But if you will write down the scripture um, and you can, you, if you don't get over there, you can read it. Um, at a, at a, at a time. Yeah, go ahead, brother. brother. Uh, those three verses you read, 9 through 11, you know, as Christians uh, and in the society, Sometimes it's easy for us to tolerate uh, some immoral behavior. It, it, it comes next to us, uh, like drunkenness and smoking and or whatever it is. So we tolerate that and stuff. But then other sins we don't tolerate, like homosexual or thieves. So we look at them, you just stole something from me, I'm going to shoot you like you But now you drunk. Just go home and relax, you know. So we tolerate some sin. And some sin we don't tolerate, but it's it, it all sin. And we don't need to be partakers of that sin that we tolerate. With. It's just like the things that we don't tolerate. But sometimes we come partakers of it and, and we let it go and we pass it on. I just want to read that. Read that. Now you please need to go back. Hebrews 6 okay. But you're supposed to write it down before you make your comment, but that's all right. Um, but to what you said, if I can just add to it, if you don't mind, um, one of the things we keep in mind when we look at sin in general, society will accept certain things and they will, you know, equate it to morality or just you have the right to do this and that, but we as the children of God, just because legislators may say it's okay, that doesn't make it not sin before God. That's why the Bible tells us we ought to obey God rather than man. Man will pass a lot of laws. Um, um, even back in Michigan, you can just about buy marijuana, um, you know, for recreation use, just about. Um, so, you know, man passed a lot of laws, but that don't make it clear with God, you know. Um, we still have to look to God for our direction, for uh, the way that we conduct ourselves and the way we live our life. And I agree with you, Brother Button, but when it's accepted in society, and especially when it's legal, you know, when it's legal, you know, we, we, we kind of a little more inclined to do it, and that still doesn't make it right, still doesn't make it, make it right. But Hebrews chapter number six, and I want to begin reading that verse number three. Look what the Bible says. The Bible says, and this will we do if God permit. And then verse number four, he says, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified themselves, the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. Now, what I want us to see is in verse number four, 
the Bible says when we come to Christ, there is an enlightenment that takes place, right? We were blind. We were in darkness. But when Christ, when we come to Christ, he opened up our eyes. Mm -hmm. He take the blinders off of us. He, he, he removed the darkness that's in our heart. And the Bible tells us that, you know, for those of us who have come to the light and God has lit a fire within us, if we allow that fire to go out, if we don't continue to stoke that fire, if we don't continue to keep some oil on that fire, the Bible says it's going to be impossible to bring those who were enlightened back to God if they should fall away. Because the thing is, we don't have nothing else to work with. Amen. 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 As a preacher, I ain't got nothing else to work with. When you stop liking the word, even myself, when I, I stop liking the word and I don't want to do nothing with the word no more, really, you don't really have no way to bring me back. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we pray God give him the grace. God give him the mercy. Uh, uh, allow him to come to himself. Mm -hmm. Lord, bring him out the far country, right? Mm -hmm. Right? But really, even when I'm just alluding to the, the prodigal son, the father didn't go down there to preach him a sermon, right? Because really what he had already put in him, if that didn't bring him back, what none going to bring him back? And the thing is, he was able to reflect on what the father had put in him. That's why the Bible tells us, train up a child. And the way it should go. And when he's older, he will not depart from it. Meaning that it will be with him. Not to say we're not going to make no mistakes. Not to say that we're not going to rebel. Not to say we're not going to go the other way. But at the end of the day, we'll have something to reflect back on. Right. My mama taught me better than this. Big mama taught me better than this. She was praying for me. I didn't have to go this way. So, so we, we have something to reflect back on. But, but I, I know I'm telling the truth, but the Bible says when you are enlightened, how are we are enlightened? We're about to look at it in um, 2 Peter. Let's turn over to 2 Peter real quick. And 2 Peter show us how we are enlightened. 2 Peter chapter number 2, and then we're going to go back to chapter number 1. Um, but look what the Bible says. The Bible tells us, in 2 Peter, chapter number 2, beginning at verse number, let's, let's just do verse number 18. We'll start at verse number 18. He says, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error, Right? And then verse number 19, he says, while they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome of the same as he brought in bondage. And then verse number 20 is where I really want to draw down that. Verse number 20 says, for if after they have escaped the pollution of the world, how do you escape? Through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning, for it had been better mm -hmm. for them not to have known the way of righteousness mm -hmm. than after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it is happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed, or the pig, if you will, the pig that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. And so, so he says, the way that we escape our blindness, the way that we escape our corruption is through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Right? Amen. Amen. If anyone is going to come to God, it's going to be through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. You, 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 you cannot just fall into righteousness. You cannot just be right by circumstances or by chance. It's a 
cognitive decision. That's why we say you gotta, uh, well, the Hebrew writer says, uh, you cannot please God without faith, right? Amen. You can't even come to God without faith. You got to believe. It, it can't just be, oh, I'm all right with God. No, none of us are just all right with God. Yeah. What makes us all right or what brings us out of darkness, what brings us out of pollution, what brings us out of sin is our knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I got more scripture for you. Maybe that, that didn't do it, but, but I got more scripture for you. But the Bible says... What we need to be concerned about after God has brought us out, don't get entangled with what he brought you out of. Oh, God. I said it on Sunday. I said it on Sunday, and I'll say it again. Don't start thinking or start romanticizing your past or the sin that you was a part of. Oh, it wasn't that bad. I wasn't as bad as them. I only smoked weed. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh, they was out here. They did that. Y'all know how we do. Uh, she she only cheated. She cheated with two men. I you know I only had, I only cheated once with one man. She had five husbands, but I only had y'all ain't saying nothing up in this church. Amen. And, and sometimes we start discounting our sin, but in y'all go back to Genesis. Eating from the fruit of the tree, and I mind we real when we look at the, some of the stuff we done, and you don't eat off the fruit of the tree, amen. I, we almost trade that, but it, the Bible says sin is sin, and the wages of sin is damn. It ain't no blue collar sin, ain't no white collar sin. Ain't no uh, um, better sin than my sin. No, sin is sin. Mercy. One lie. Mercy. You condemn the hell. Amen. Christ died for you for, yes. for, to redeem you from that one lie. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, uh, some had, uh, I, I had a good illustration. It escaped me. It escaped me. It escaped me. Christ died for, oh, yeah, this, you know, I ain't tell a lie, but I just thought it. Christ redeemed you from what you thought. <laughs> yeah. I ain't even go through with it, but you was romantic. You, you was thinking about it. You was contemplating it. Christ redeemed you for that. A corrupt mind, a corrupt thinking. Christ died for that. Oh, God. Because y'all remember over in Genesis, I think it was around the 8th chapter, one of the things that God said when he destroyed the earth, and I'm, I'm going back to people who was at Button class, and over at, not Button class, but at Button House when we, were, when we were at the evangelism class, but one of the things that he said, he said, one of the reasons that I'm destroying the earth, he said, is because man's imagination mm -hmm. yeah. is evil always. Mm -hmm. they ain't, not everything they're doing, just what they thinking about doing. Wow. Thinking about mm -hmm. All you do is sit back and think about yeah. Sinful stuff. <laughs> and if you keep thinking, sitting back thinking about sinful stuff, after a while, you're going to carry it out. Mm -hmm. Circumstances, eh? Hey, all right, all right. Let's, let's leave that alone. But the Bible talks about the knowledge that Jesus Christ is what brought us out. Okay, I want us to see one other passage. Not one other passage. I got two more passages. Let's go over to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Matthew, the 13th chapter. And I want us to see this because I, I know we're familiar with this parable of the sower. But I want us to see something before Jesus explained the parable. When he talked about his disciples, I asked them a question. They said, now what does this mean? What does this mean? Uh, let's start at verse number 10 of Matthew, the 13th chapter. And the Bible says, and the disciples came and said unto him, why speakest thou unto them in parables, right? Mm -hmm. Let me read it in the NIV because um, I like the way that it reads, but also it used the word knowledge. I want to I want to I want to read it in the NIV. Anybody got the NIV? You can read it for me. Go ahead and read verse number eleven for us, and uh, and, and go go down to verse number fourteen if you would. He replied, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more. 
and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. This is why I speak to you. This is why I speak to them in parables. Through seeing, they do not see. Through hearing, they do not hear or understand. And then it fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah. Verse number 14. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceive. For the people's heart are become callous. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them, right? Um, um, let, me, let me go ahead and read down through here. Verse number 16 says, But blessed are you, your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. For truly I tell you, Many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Listen then to what the parable, um, verse number 18 said, parable of the sower means, and I won't go into it, y'all familiar with that, we'll read that some other time, but I just wanted us to see what Jesus said um, in verse number 12 especially. He said, whoever... Whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even that they have will be taken from them. And then verse number, verse number, um, no, verse number 11. He said, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Okay. Now, y'all remember, and I think he said it here, he said, he that has an ear, let him hear, right? And when we see, sometimes we wonder, man, people heard the same thing I heard. Why they don't believe? Y'all ever wonder that? Wow, who would want to reject a savior? Who want to reject somebody who died for them or who can help them and change their life and make their life right? Uh, who, who, why some people don't come to Christ? But Christ explains it to us, and that's why we got to understand the privilege and the, the, the place that we are in. See, sometimes we just, we, we, sometimes we can just start thinking that, well, ain't nothing to this because it's a church on every corner, and everybody got a Bible, and um, you know, we live in America and you can turn on the, on, watch te television evangelists and so on and so forth. It's, it's all around us, right? Godly or spiritual things or biblical things are all around us. But what Jesus is explaining, Jesus is explaining, even though you may hear spiritual things, even though the seed may be coming at you, Everybody is not enlightened by the words that are coming forth. And that's what he's going to explain in the parable. Because there's some conditions that need to take place in order for the word to bear fruit. Right? Amen. Jesus said it this way. He said, many are called, but few are chosen. Right? Now, now I, I want us to get this because we sit in a privileged place. It's some people, that's why even when we look at our sins, it's some people that did the same thing we did and are not here. Amen. Right? It's some people that did the same thing or less than what we did. And they're not here. And then there's some people, it's some people who heard more than what we had. Brought up in a godly household. Uh -huh. Uncle was a preacher. So true. Daddy was a preacher. Grandfather was a preacher. Went to Bible school. <laughs> and then grow up and they don't want to do, they don't want to have nothing to do with God, period. I'm an atheist now. 
So the point to be made is just because it's available don't mean that everyone where it was able to fully take, if you will. And I'm trying my best to explain the best I can, but the parable talks about it fell on different grounds. Mm -hmm. Even though it was the same word, same seed. And then, matter of fact, when we, we still over there, we might as well read it because y'all ain't going to let me rest if I don't read it. But Brother Button, go ahead and make your comment, and then we're going to read verse number 18 through verse number 23. And then I want to look at one other passage that we jumping over to Acts 9, 9 chapter. Matter of fact, after we read this, you can put your hand over in Hosea chapter number 4. Brother Button. I'd like to read this tie-in to what you just read in Peter, um, which for we are a slave to whatever control us. If the evil spirit control us, we'll slave there. If the good spirit control us, we'll slave there. And so, and right here is telling us, if we're slaves to the evil spirit, we see, but don't see. Mm. We hear, but don't hear. Yeah. We just don't understand. Because whatever our desire is, Christ or non-Christ, that is basically what controlling us on different situations, different things. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And that's what we see with Saul. That's what we see in Saul. When we go over there, everything we're talking about, we're talking about this for a reason. We're going to see it right in Saul. Until God took the scales off his eye. Amen. He, he, he was sin, but he wasn't sin. He, he was, you know, so, we, we, you know, we go, let's read verse number 18 through 23. Can I get a reader for those verses? Let's get the grass on. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. But truly, I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but do not see it, and to hear what you hear, but do not hear it. He's 18. Mm -hmm. Listen then to what the parable of the four means. When someone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in the heart. They, in the heart. This is the seed soil along the path. Verse 20. The seed falls on rocky ground, referring to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. At once receives it with joy. 21. But, but since this has not rooted, excuse me, but since this has no root, they last only a short time. Where mm -hmm. trouble and persecution come because of the word, they quickly fall away. Mm -hmm. The seed fall among the thorn refer to someone who hears the word, but the rarity of the life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word and make it unfruitful, 25. But the seed falls on good soil, referring to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produced a crop, yielding a hundred, a hundred and, excuse me, yielding a hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. Amen. So, so uh, um, when we extend the invitation at the end of the worship service, what are um, the five things that I cover on our way to Christ in order for us to get in Christ? What's the five things that I, I normally say? Believe, hear, believe, hear the word, hear believe, believe, the word, believe the word, confess, repent, the word, confess, and, confess be and be baptized. Because the point is, even though the word go forth, if you don't believe, the word cannot bear fruit. Mm -hmm. And then even if you believe and you're not willing to repent, mm -hmm. change your mind and allow God to guide you and point you in the proper direction, the word cannot bear fruit. I got Bible for that. The Bible tells us in James, even the devils believe and they tremble. Amen. But they ain't getting saved. Amen. They, they believe and they tremble. But, but 
for the, the word to take effect, you got to change your way of thinking. You got to submit to the direction of Christ. Let him point you in the proper way. And then the Bible tells us that we got to be willing to confess. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us we must confess what's in our heart with our mouth, especially when it comes to Jesus Christ. We just read about uh, who was that? He asked him. He said, he said, what hindered me from being baptized? Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all. Don't leave me out here. Philip in the unit. Yeah, Philip in the unit. And he said, if thou believes. And then the Ethiopian unit, he spoke up with his own mouth. I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, right? Yeah. Then they went down in the watery grave of baptism and he, and he was baptized, right? Mm -hmm. So so there are, there, there is, y'all, this ain't the English tonight. I might mess up some grammar tonight, but y'all gotta, y'all gotta give me a little grace in that department tonight. But, but. There are some conditions on our end. We just read the parable. Mm -hmm. The same seed went out. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, why everybody, why we can't get 30-fold, 50-fold, 100-fold from everybody? He said because the condition of the ground it fell on. These are people, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking about the heart. This yeah. ain't, he just mm -hmm. used the parable, right? Yeah. But I, I alluded to the fact some people can do less because they allow it to take full fruition. Some people can have all, everything they need to be a Christian, to be successful, and no fruit come from it. Mm -hmm. We won't read it, but I just want to jog y'all mind. But y'all remember that woman, just two chapters from where we read she went and she said, Jesus, my daughter is sick. Can you heal her? And Jesus said, well, you know, I can't give the bread from the house to the dogs. Y all, y all, that's familiar. That's a little jog. jog Y'all remember? And she said, well, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the table. She wasn't talking about no crumbs. She was saying, okay, now I know you came to bless Israel first. She said, but really, you don't set the table for them, but they ain't even coming to the feast. <laughs> well, just give me the crumbs. Y'all wow. yeah, yeah. oh, ain't going to help me on this yeah, tonight. Yeah. And the Bible <laughs> says Jesus commended her for her faith. Yeah. She and Levi there talking about who you calling the dog. <laughs> she said, I got to get my blessing. <laughs> And, and I might as well stay right there for a minute, a minute because some of us, we, we, we don't use that as a crutch, don't use that as an excuse. Oh, my daddy won in the church. My mama won. Well, what is the Lord saying now? Amen. How did the Lord make a bridge to you now? Don't use that as no excuse. Well, my family ain't sweet. If I was just brought up still, my mama would have brought me to Sunday school. I'd be, no, God is doing something right now. Obey and yield to him right now. Because you know we can lean on that. But the Bible already told us that the sins of the father is not going to be laid up on the children. You have your own relationship with God. God don't have no grandchildren. All he have is son and daughters. You can't just, Elijah ain't about to just inherit uh, uh, Christianity because his parents, both his parents are Christians. Now, he should be more inclined from seeing our example and coming up in this environment, but he got to make the choice for himself. Amen. God don't have no grandchildren. Amen. 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 All right, all right. I, I ain't mean to get it. Brother Sansbury said that's why I don't come to Wednesday night. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> but but uh, let's go to one more passage that we're going over to Acts the ninth chapter. Um, Hosea, what's that? Hosea. Yeah, Hosea chapter number four. And I want us to just see when we begin, what happened when mankind began to reject God's knowledge? Look at the path that we find ourselves on. And we already seen it in 1 Corinthians um, chapter number 6, but it, this has been happening. Anytime we start rejecting God's knowledge, look at the path that man found himself on. If you, you, don't, if you get over there before me, um, someone start reading at verse number 1. Verse number one. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy 
with the inhabitants of the land. Because there is no truth, no mercy, no knowledge of God. Don't overlook it. Uh, anytime you read in the word we search for is knowledge. Okay. Put a little emphasis on that. But look what God said. God said, go ahead and read it again. Because there is no truth, no mercy, no knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing mm -hmm. and stealing and committing adultery, mercy. they break out. And blood touches blood. Mm -hmm. Therefore should the land mourn. And everyone that dwell therein shall languish with the, with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of the heavens. Yea, the fish of the sea also shall be taken away. Yet let no man scribe nor reprove another, for thy people are as they that scribe with the priests. Any more? Yeah, go ahead and read the verse number 8. Okay. Therefore shall thy fall in the day, and the prophet also, also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. Verse number six, that's where I want to go. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, mm -hmm. because thou has rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, mm -hmm. that thou shall be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Mercy. Uh, uh, we won't read it all, but if you read that entire chapter, God said there's some consequences for rejecting knowledge. Mercy. Because when you reject knowledge, you are rejecting me. This Bible is not just an ordinary Bible. This is God's word. It's God breathed, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is the logos of God. Jesus said on one occasion, he said, I am the word, mm -hmm. right? When you reject the word, you're really rejecting Jesus. Yes. Yeah. And the Bible says, now, how, how y'all going to make it without me? Over and over, the Bible keeps showing us. The Bible keeps showing us, and we can see it in our time. Every time man rejects God and his word, we are left to our own devices. Amen. And it don't make us more better. It don't make us more righteous. It don't even make us more enlightened. We think if we get God out of it, okay, well, we're going to be more superior. But the Bible continues to show us and we talked about it. I can't. That was a good class because I keep referring back to it, Brother Button. Yeah, but the Bible keeps, the Bible tells us over and over, instead of us evolving, we devolve. Mm. In this chapter, he says they, they become as the beasts. Mm -hmm. You know, see, see, really, the Bible says, the Bible says we are made a little lower than the angels, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of us going up and becoming more heavenly, we end up going down when we reject the word of God and when we reject him. Lucifer seen it for himself. Oh, you want to reject God? Down to the dust you go. Amen. So if Lucifer rejected angels and then the third of heaven with him rejected him, now Christ don't came and died for us, our crazy self. Because if it was me, amen, y'all ain't saying nothing. It, I'm just telling y'all, I, I, you know, if it was me, I want y'all to see it. Some of y'all say the same thing. If it was y'all, it, it might be a different situation. But Christ, in spite of the shame, the degradation that came with him, you know, coming to die for us, he died for us in spite of that. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to reject him? Amen. Oh, God. But I'm, I, I want to I wanna make, I want, this, is, this is worth stopping because it has eternal consequences. It ain't just no 90 days in jail. Once you reject him, he said that you're no longer going to be in his presence. And once we are removed from the presence of God, all that's left is hell. 
All right, all right, all right. So, so <laughs> it starts with rejection of knowledge. Let's go over, back over to Acts the ninth chapter and let's look at Saul. Saul, who was in darkness, who was blind. Mm -hmm. And we're going to look at how God brought him out of his darkness, out of his blindness. We already read it, but let's start at verse number one, um, where it says, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if, I, I, I want to, I want, I, let me pause right there for those who have been going through this with us. Um, I, I hope y'all see the progression. Saul, he's getting bolder and bolder. You know, that's why they say, like, sometimes when uh, once a, a wild animal bites somebody, you got to put them down yeah. because they're going to continue to bite. And then they're going to breed little, little animals that bite humans, right? <laughs> you got to put them down. But Saul is getting bolder and bolder. Remember, we just read, what was he doing before this? He, now he's going to the synagogue. But he was doing something before that. Yeah, he was going house to house. Men and women. Now he's saying, let's go ahead and kick this up. Zealous. What did you say, Brother McCuss? Yeah, whoever was missing. You was hiding out at church? Okay, I'll come to church and get you. Uh, you, you before you stayed at home, but I, I'm going to come to the church house and get you. But the Bible says, the Bible says he was zealous. He was stuck on this, but it wasn't according to knowledge. He was blind. Mm -hmm. In a blind rage, if you will. Mm -hmm. But he was active. He was moving. He was doing some stuff. He was zealous. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't according mm -hmm. to knowledge. Brother Buddy. Uh, you know, Brother T.J., I just hate to say this. Since you read. This is something. Ain't this what he just, what you just read? Also sound like some of the churches of Christ that's surround. Brothers and sisters going to the preachers talking about other brothers and sisters. They they fought that they ill or whatever it is. And that's what Paul is doing, going to the priest talking about these folks. You know, it sounds like some of the churches of Christ that I did it around about here and there. Uh oh, I ain't get that connection, brother Buddy. Right? I ain't get that connection. <laughs> I ain't get it. But that's all right. That's all right. Uh, maybe God gonna open up my eyes later on about that, brother Buddy. But 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 it talks about him going to get letters to go to the synagogues if he found any of this way. Now the church was referred to as the way. Um, you know, it was the people of the way, and they looked at themselves, and we kind of already alluded to it that they were headed somewhere. They were going in a direction that God was showing them. So they were referred to as the way. They were referred to um, as Christians, we know. They were referred to in a number of ways, but they were known as the way, right? And look what the Bible says. The Bible says, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell on the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? Now, um, is, does, does that stand out to anybody's mind when his name is called twice? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. But we see that through the text. When Jesus is using a name twice, he's really trying to make sure that you understand that he wants your attention. Simon, Simon. Remember, the devil desires to sift you as we. Uh, when he was talking to the different cities, cities of Capernaum and um, the different cities over in Matthew, the 23rd chapter, he said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, God would have wanted to take you as a chick, takes his little ones under his wing. Um, it, it's, it's some other situations where he, he used the name twice, but he, he, as you said, Sister McCutcheon, he wants him to know that, you know, you better pay attention to this, what, what I'm saying right now. Uh, okay, I can't keep doing that. Okay, we ain't gonna we ain't gonna get as far as we need to get. But look what verse number four says. The Bible says, and he fell to the earth mm -hmm. 
and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? And they said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Mm -hmm. And he trembling, I think that's as far as we got in this verse mm -hmm. number five, but verse number six says, and he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. It shall be told thee what thou must do, right? Mm -hmm. First thing you got to do is get up and go. Now, it's not going to be told thee what you must do if you don't first get up and go. Oh, I, I think that's worth saying. I, I think Amen. that's worth emphasizing because people would like to say, well, all you got to do is believe in your heart. Amen. Well, if that's the case, Saul would have been saved. Lord, Lord, what must I do? He already confessed his name. Lord, mm -hmm. but Lord said, if you want to know what you must do, get up, arise, and go, and it will be told to you. What you must do. Amen. And look what the Bible says. The Bible says. He was trembling. He was scared. He was astonished. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says. In verse number 7. And the men which journeyed with him. Stood speechless. Hearing a voice. But seeing no men. Mm -hmm. Oh God. That take us back to Matthew the 13th chapter. Oh, yeah. Heard the same thing. But they was not enlightened like Paul was enlightened. Uh, okay, okay, let's leave it alone. Let's leave it alone. Let's see if we can let, let's see if we can get these scales off of Saul's eye before we get out of here. Um, but the Bible says in verse number eight, and Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were open, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus, and he was three days without sight. Neither did he eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision. Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire of the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prays. Not only, not only, was he believing? Not only was he saying, Lord, but the Bible said he was praying. Amen. But was he saved? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Still blind? He's, he's on the right path. Mm -hmm. But he got to continue to hear. It will be told to you what you must do. Yeah. The Bible says in verse number 12, and, and has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he has done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. To bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. We read the verse number 19. Verse number 17 says, And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me. Thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it, as it had been scales. And he received sight forthwith and arose and was what, y'all? Right? But listen to all this stuff that took place with Saul getting to the water. Lord. What must I do? Praying, got up and go, went, still wasn't saved, right? And Ananias told him what he needed to do. You're on the right path. That's why I, I keep trying to emphasize to us 
that the Bible tells us. Matter of fact, we ain't read it in a while. How much time we got? Let's go over to Romans, the 10th chapter, real quick. Romans, the 10th chapter, because some people, they have created a doctrine out of this. But if you look at what um, the Word of God is saying in Romans, the 10th chapter, you can see it a little, little clearer over here. Romans, the 10th chapter. And let's look at um, verse number 10. We'll start at verse number 10. No, let's start at verse number 9. It says, And if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth, now listen to this, don't miss this word, U-N-T-O, is that in your King James Version, or if you ain't got the King James Version, it might have another word, but it says, unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, okay, unto, you, you heading in the right direction, but how do you get I-N-T-O? This is how you get I-N-T-O. Turn over to Galatians, the third chapter, verse number 27. Galatians, the third chapter, verse number 27. Because it's one thing to get, you know, I, and I used this example before, but for Pam and the, uh, the other few folks who wasn't here when I used this example, Pam. But but when, when me and Alicia was engaged, right, Pam? You gonna you gonna you gonna stick with me for a minute as I use this little illustration. <laughs> when me and Alicia was engaged, even though we were engaged, if we wouldn't have went fully through with our engagement to holy matrimony, we never would have been wedded, right? You could be engaged, you could be dating, you could be courting, but if you don't go through with it. Oh, I know, tell them the truth. Okay, let's leave Henry and Alicia off the plate. Joseph and Mary. Mary showed up, talking about I'm pregnant with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he was about to put her away. But God showed up and said, no, I'll go through with the marriage, but don't consummate it until she have the child. Right? They were engaged. They were heading to the altar, but in order for them to be married, they had to make it to the altar. That's right. They had to go through with it. Mm, okay, okay, okay. Uh, we somebody uh, Galatians the third chapter verse number twenty seven. Galatians the third chapter. Oh, I gave y'all all that time with my illustration and Joseph and Mary and all that. <laughs> Galatians the third chapter verse number twenty seven. Y'all better not let me beat y'all over there. Okay, I'm there now. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but but you see in verse number twenty seven, it don't use the word unto Christ. How you get into Christ is through baptism. And then if you want further scripture, Romans the sixth chapter. We got time. Let's go over there. Romans the sixth chapter. It, it, it tells us how we get into Christ. Yeah, you believe unto Christ, but as we read in, in Matthew the thirteenth chapter, even though the word is going for. If we don't allow it to come to its full fruition, the devil would try to abort the seed that has been planted. But God wants the seed to come to full term. Amen? Amen. Romans the sixth chapter, and this will be our last passage. This will be our last passage. It was some, it was some, it was some thoughts that I want to make over in uh, chapter nine, but I'll let you guys make y'all thoughts and then I'll save mine for um, Sunday. But um, Romans chapter number six, Romans chapter number six, somebody over there, let's begin reading that verse number one. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Into or unto? Into. into. It's consistent showing us this is how you get into. Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, now, can you can you just get baptized without believing? No, mm -hmm. you can't just get baptized without believing. That's why we don't baptize babies. Mm -hmm. Eliza, do you believe? Do you believe? <laughs> no, he gotta believe. He it, it gotta be in his heart. He gotta know what he's doing. Amen. 
We could put him in water and talk about he was baptized from an infant. No, if he didn't make the decision to be baptized, it's not and void. So hearing, believing, and confessing and repenting, all that's a part of it, but to fully go through with it, the Bible says this is how we get into Christ through baptism, right? We just seen it with Saul. Saul was praying. Psalms say he was fasting. He didn't eat or drink for three days. Confess, Lord. But when Ananias got to him, the Bible still says, he says, baptism. Right? Okay, go ahead, Steve. And we're going to verse number 14. You can make it down there, Brother Steve. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died. He died unto sin once, but in that he liveth. He liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Never yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And, and, and here's the thing. <clears throat> we are, uh, let's go back to the scripture we started with. The Hebrew writer said, once we are enlightened, once Christ sparked a fire within us, the Holy Spirit, y'all know it's, it's, it's a picture, a symbol of fire. Once he put that fire within us, right, we got to allow it to grow. We got to allow it to get bigger. We got to allow it to mature. But if we allow that fire to go out, Can't nobody else put you on fire but Jesus. Amen. Ain't no angel going to be able to do it. Ain't nobody coming after Jesus. Once we reject Jesus, once we reject that light, we going back dark. Amen. And the scary part is, as Peter is playing, it would have been better if we never known. Mm -hmm. Because he said, once we have escaped and we go back to it, it's like what, y'all? A dog returning to his vomit? Or a pig after you don't wash the pig up going to jump back in the, in the mire, in the mud. He said, it's better that you just stayed in the mud. But I don't came and cleaned you up, and now you, you, you ready to go jump back in the pollution and the corruption that God done brought you out of. Yeah. You was blind, and now he allowed you to see, and you, now you want to go blind again. You want to be blind again. You want to be around blind folks. And the Bible already told us that the blind lead the blind. You know where everybody who go, they both going to fall in the ditch. But God don't brought you out to enlighten you so you don't have to end up in destruction. But he says, now, if we reject the light that should continue to lead us, there, there really is no other uh, way to bring us back. Any any comments before we close out on tonight? I just have one. Go ahead, Brother Bunny. I want to go back to uh, Acts chapter 9, verse 11, and I'm going to just read it. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judah yeah. <laughs> on Straight Street and ask for a man named Taurus. Ask for a man from Taurus named Saul, for he is praying. And that answers a lot of questions. Because some folks say, well, God don't hear a sinner's prayer. Some folks say, God don't answer a sinner's prayer. But right here, clearly, God does hear this prayer. It's hard not to answer it. Amen. But God does hear a sinner's prayer. Now, I don't know who responds to it or not, but I do. 
It Amen. doesn't say he was praying. And Paul at that time was a sinner because he got baptized later on. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, the Bible already told us in Isaiah the 59 chapter that, you know, God ear is not heavy that it cannot hear. His arm is not short that it cannot save, but our iniquities separate us from our God. So God sees everything. We know God sees everything. But we know there's some rights that come with being a child of God. We have the right to come to the throne of both. Now, if God choose to hear our prayers, you know, as alien sinners, that's his grace that's doing that. Back to the woman who said, okay, I know this is for the children of Israel, but I take the crumbs. So sometimes, and some of us know, God answers some prayers, and that was just the crumbs that fall from. We didn't have the right to those prayers, but those was just. The crumbs, the grace in his mouth. And God can do a whole bunch with the crumbs. Oh, <laughs> he fed the multitudes. <laughs> Amen. With crumbs. Are you saying, I misunderstand what he said. God does hear the sinner's prayer. You mm -hmm. respond to it. It's great sometimes. I, I just misunderstand what you're saying. Well, let me say this. Let me say this. Prayer alone need to be, a, it, 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 prayer need to be accompanied with obedience. Um, you can't just pray and pray and then God's telling you what you need to do and you choose to be disobedient you don't have the right to pray once you reject instruction right okay let me give you let me give you a little more Bible for that um, y'all remember let's see for example Saul of the Old Testament God told him to go down and destroy the city, I forget the city. He told him to go destroy the Malachites. Uh, Malachites. Mm -hmm. And um, when Samuel came in the camp, he said, now nah, I told, I know what God told you to do. Why I hear all this sheep dying and all this, you know. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Saul so going to talk about, well, the people, they said they want to keep the stuff. Samuel said, obedience is better than sacrifice, right? Oh, God. Brother Button, come on. You're about to maybe go in another 15 minutes. Oh, but he told him, he said, obedience is better than sacrifice, right? Oh, God. So, 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 Saul rejected us king. God said, I'm going to raise up somebody else. You getting cut off. Ah, oh, he told me it's going to be cut off. Lo and behold, he stayed on the throne for a while. God raised up David. Saul was envious of David. He was scared that he was going to take the throne, but God had already told him, right? Yeah. Brother Bunny, stick with me. Don't, don't, don't look like that. You better stick with me. You the one got me out here. Uh, <laughs> but the Bible says, the Bible says, lo and behold. Y'all remember? Yeah. I'm talking to you, but you remember when Samuel died, he, Saul was rejected. Sin between him and God. He went and got a witch to bring up Samuel because he wasn't hearing from God no more. If that don't bring it home, brother, but nothing will. He lost his connection between God because of sin. Can God hear him? Yeah, God see him. But he lost the right, Amen. the privilege that he had with God. And that's when he tried to dig up Samuel. Samuel said, no, why you messing with me? I was resting. <laughs> I was, can I use the word, I'm chilling in heaven and you coming up here conjuring me up? He said, now if God's not answering you, he's not going to answer you through me. Amen. You, you cut off. So go back and study that and that show us, you know, it's not that God don't know what's going on, but it's a privilege and the right to be able to say, Abba, Father. Amen. He's your father, ask him. Now, when you start acting delinquent and all that, and you allow sin to build up between you, you break down the communication. Amen. 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 And that's why the Bible says, the Bible says, and y'all got me in overtime. I might as well go ahead and clean it up. But that's why the Bible tells us in Galatians 6 chapter, if a brother be overtaken in the fall, ye who are still spiritual, restore such a one, considering yourself, lest you fall. Okay, okay, well, okay, okay, if, 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 if just because I'm a child of God and I, I'm, I'm dealing with a little sin, well, why I can't just do it myself? Because you're disconnected. 
you thank you. You disconnect. Sin disconnect. All right, all right. We leave it no, alone. We leave it alone. You gave a good answer that I thank you for. I have to think a little bit. <laughs> no, that wasn't just to you, brother, but but it was just the topic in general, if you would. It was just the topic in general. Uh, on tonight, on tonight, uh, we heard the word. I hope that it encourages us, it strengthens our faith. We didn't get a chance to read it, but I want you to read it. Second Peter, the chap chapter number one, it talks about us adding to our faith. Yeah. Add to your faith virtue, no. knowledge, patience, and it says some other things. Add this to oh. your faith, yeah. you know. Uh, um, so our faith has to be increased. It has to mature. <laughs> On tonight, every time we study the word of God, we upset the devil. We read the parable where the devil, he, 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 after you hear something, he want to come and snatch it mm -hmm. out of your heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because he know that's what's going to cause us to bear fruit. It's when the seed remains and ultimately bears some fruit. But if he could come and snatch it out of your heart, now you end up in the self-same situation because he don't snatch the light out of your heart. Now you're still in the dark. Right? Amen. So on tonight, I pray that this has strengthened someone's heart. Um, lit your fire a little, little brighter because we are the light of the world. Amen. 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 I'm going to let it go, Brother McCutcheon, but I, it's, 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 <laughs> amen, amen, we, and, and they ain't got school tomorrow, so we might as well go to midnight tonight, Brother Sansbury, midnight, uh, somebody fall out the window, you know, we're we going we to keep it going, but on tonight, the Bible says we hear the word, but we must believe the word, we got to be willing to repent, we got to be willing to confess, we got to be willing to put the Lord on in baptism, and the Bible says God adds us to his church, he adds us to his family. Um, he gives us the Holy Ghost. He um, tells us that he'll never leave us or forsake us. He tells us to go on and be faithful even unto them. On tonight, if someone is subject to the Savior's invitation, you can make it known, or as a child of God, um, you can make it known if you stand in need of prayer. Brother McCutcheon.